Have you just been told that you need a cataract operation or are you thinking of having it done privately? Please do watch this video to learn more about cataract surgery, what the pre-operative phase involves, what typically the risks and benefits of the procedure are and how the aftercare process ensues. Listen carefully throughout the video for lots of tips for yourself and or your family and friends and loved ones. I am hoping that this video will serve as a one-stop shop for the vast majority of your questions and queries pertaining to cataract surgery. Basically, a cataract is when the lens within our eyes becomes cloudy over time. There are different types of cataracts and the definitive management for cataracts is cataract surgery. If you are watching this video, then potentially you have already visited the hospital eye service where they have confirmed that you do have a cataract. They have taken the necessary measurements for the lens that they are going to put into your eyes when they take the cataract out and you will probably have a date for your cataract surgery. So please do watch this video to learn more about what you should and should not do pre-operatively, what the risks and benefits of the procedure are, and important things to bear in mind after you've had the operation done. So your big day has arrived and you are probably very excited in addition to slightly anxious and potentially nervous. Rest assured that throughout your journey and experience there will be healthcare professionals on hand to try and help you each and every step of the way. The first thing to bear in mind is it's important not to wear any eye makeup or any face creams and or lotions on the day of your procedure. You will usually be given a time to attend the hospital and when you do attend you will be greeted by nursing staff who will show you to your particular either ward area and or cubicle depending on where you are having the procedure done. One thing you will need to bear in mind on the day of your operation is the fact that at several different points your identity will be checked so please do not be put off by this um, and simply this is done to ensure that the correct patient is operated on and the correct eye is operated on so essentially we are asking you about your particular details on multiple occasions for your safety so please do bear that in mind after you've had a chance to settle in and some of the formalities with respect to paperwork have been completed, then the formal drops procedure will typically begin. This may begin prior to the surgeon seeing you on the day or it may begin soon after. What the nurses typically do is use a combination of two eye drops and what these eye drops do is it dilates your pupil and that therefore affords the surgeon the greatest and best view for when they are carrying out your particular surgery. In terms of your other medications, patients always ask whether they should or should not be taking certain medications. With respect to certain blood thinners, prior to you attending on the day, your particular surgeon and or anaesthetist will have and should have advised you on what to do and this can vary from one surgeon to another. So unless specifically told so, continue with your normal regular medications and do not omit any. The key 
other steps that will need to happen um, in addition to three sets of two particular eye drops being instilled within the eye that's going to be operated on are the anaest anaesthetist will need to come and see you and they will basically explain their role explain what they are going to do with respect to how they're going to numb your eye so that you have a pain-free experience during the surgery and they will also go through the relative risks and benefits of the particular approach that they are going to take again depending on what type of anesthetic they are going to use they will explain that particular approach and the associated risks and benefits the two common ways that the eyes tend to get anesthetized prior to cataract surgery include simply using eye drops or the more common approach tends to be what's called a sub tenons block and this is basically where a small nick is made into the white part of one's eye and a very blunt what's called a cannula will be inserted into this little pocket and passed around the side of it and um, get to the back of the eye and then the anesthetic is injected around the eye. This tends to be the popular choice of anesthetic at this particular moment in time. And if you see the picture on screen now, the needle um, is not particularly threatening or concerning and as I mentioned it's actually quite blunt so please do not fear when you hear the word an injection will be given around or in and around the eye. Please do ask as many questions as possible of your anaesthetist because at the end of the day they are there to ensure that you are both anaesthetized and completely comfortable for the operation to take place. In some instances, sedation may very well need to be given and your anaesthetist is the best person to discuss this with. Again, the anaesthetist may come to see yourself either before or after the actual surgeon does. When the surgeon comes to see you, they will essentially again confirm your identity. They will usually just read your notes and understand how the cataract is troubling yourself. They will usually have a discussion with yourself about what the goals are of surgery. For example, are the goals to leave you with perfect sight for the distance and require glasses just for reading? Or is it to leave one eye corrected for the distance and one eye corrected for reading so that one can potentially be glasses free? These are some of the discussions that typically should take place prior to your surgery. Also, the surgeon or surgeons will examine your eyes under the microscope, which is called the slit lamp and they will just confirm the type of cataracts you have and assess your eyes to understand whether there are any particular risk factors that may make the surgery a bit more complicated. Once all of this has been done, they will go through the risks and benefits with yourself of the particular cataract surgery. This may have already taken place in clinic or been explained to you by another eye surgeon but it's important that the conversation is had again on the particular day of your surgery. Only when you are fully happy and potentially all of your questions have been answered, you will be asked to sign the consent form. And then once that has been done, the side that you are going to have the operation on will typically be marked either with an arrow or with the letter R for the right side and L for the left side. Again, this is a safety measure to ensure that the correct eye is operated on. The next time you will meet the surgeon or the surgeons will be in theatre. So please do ask any questions that come to your mind at this stage. Typically, the surgery tends to take anywhere between 20 up to 40 minutes and this can vary depending on 
the level of experience of the particular surgeon and or it can also be largely influenced by whether your case is complicated or whether any difficulties are encountered during your particular operation. One thing to bear in mind is the fact that despite the fact that your operation may relatively take very little time, your total stay and duration in hospital may range from several hours, potentially up to three to four hours, particularly due to the state of the world at this moment in time due to COVID-19 and several patients and their appointments for clinics or surgeries needing to be spaced out in order to comply with social distancing measures. In terms of the risks and benefits then of cataract surgery, usually the intention of cataract surgery is to improve one's vision. The other reason that cataract surgery typically tends to be performed is to try and improve the view of the back of one's eye. So for example, one may have a blind eye, for example, due to diabetes, but because there's a cataract in place, the eye doctor may be unable to see the back of the eye in order to examine the eye. And in these instances, a cataract operation can sometimes be performed. This can also happen in association with and due to other eye conditions. So essentially, as well as trying to improve the vision for patients, sometimes the operation is proposed in order to try and improve the view for the eye doctor looking into one's eye. One thing to bear in mind is that despite the operation being performed for the benefit of aiding visualization of the back of one's eye, it can also benefit the patient, but not in all instances. So what I mean by this is if the window into the eye has become clearer, this theoretically means that more light will enter the eye and therefore things may appear brighter. This may not always be the case for patients and it is important to remember that if a cataract is taken out and the eye has an underlying disease, the actual level of vision, so therefore the letters that one reads on a testing chart, that may not improve However, the brightness of images or contrast and the appearance of certain colors may very well improve. You may be wondering whether there are any alternatives to cataract surgery and the answer is no. If you have reached the stage where glasses are no longer helping to allow you to see as best as you can, then that typically means that you are ready for cataract surgery and there is not really an alternative at this moment in time. In terms of the risks then, I will discuss these in groups. So typically some of the more common risk factors include bruising in and around the eye, you may get scratches to the front of the eye, the pressure within one's eye can increase after the operation, and the front of the eye, which is the cornea, and the back of the eye, which is the macula, may show signs of swelling or edema. Some of the more serious risk factors include bleeding and or infection. And if these two do occur, then your vision can actually be left worse than it actually is prior to the particular operation. Thankfully, these rather serious risk factors tend to occur less commonly. Despite the best estimates and technology that we have, sometimes the estimation and the actual outcome of the power that we estimate your final prescription to be may be mismatched and this is known as refractive surprise. So this is something that you should bear in mind. Sometimes if the particular eye that has had the surgery performed on it 
is corrected and the power or the prescription for that particular eye becomes zero. If this is markedly different to the prescription of the other eye, then some patients can find that they struggle with initially eye strain, which may go on to become double vision. Despite cataract surgery being the most commonly performed surgery within the NHS, there are some other risk factors that you should be aware of, and they are there is one in a thousand chance that you could go blind and there is one in 10,000 chance that you could lose your eye as a result of the operation. In order to now explain one of the other complications that can occur during cataract surgery, I would like you to look at this Smarty on screen. So a Smarty has a shell at the front, it has chocolate in the middle and it has a shell at the back. The aim of cataract surgery can be thought of using the analogy of a Smarty. So we peel off the top shell, which then exposes the cataract, which in this analogy is the chocolate. The ultrasound machine during the operation then removes the cataract, which is the chocolate, and we leave the shell, which is a bag inside your eye, behind. A clear plastic lens then sits and is placed within this bag or shell and that supports the lens. However, sometimes during the surgery, um, either through a, a technical difficulty or due to the fact that there was an inherent weakness to begin with, this shell or bag may develop a breach or a hole or a tear within it. This can occur typically two times out of 100 cases but one thing to bear in mind is what can then happen is if there's a hole within this bag or a tear the jelly which sits behind the lens can then come forward and if that happens it can cause um, pulling or traction on the retina which increases the chances of retinal tears and detachments. If this was to occur during your particular operation, then additional steps would need to be taken in order to try and rectify the situation. So initially, the jelly which may have come forward will need to be cleared out, and then a lens is usually placed into your eye, but it may need to be placed in a slightly different position, possibly slightly forward to where the original planned lens insertion was. But the thing to bear in mind is, usually at this stage, the cataract is out of your eyes and you have a clear plastic lens in your eye. The operation may have taken a bit longer and difficulties may have been encountered, but usually the situation is rectified. And in real terms for you, what this means moving forward is that your recovery may take a few weeks longer, but the aim is that you should reach the final endpoint that you would have reached anyway. So that's something to bear in mind because sometimes patients will hear the word complication and immediately panic. However, the reality of the situation is that a difficulty may have been encountered, but usually it can be rectified. This obviously is not always the case. For example, if the bag is compromised, there's a risk that if the cataract has not been removed, it may very well fall into the back of the eye. If this happens, the um, wounds that were created for the surgery will need to be closed and you will need to have a second operation. A second operation, again, thankfully, does not occur often, but it can occur. And that's something that you will also be consented for. So despite cataract surgery being relatively very safe, these risk factors do exist. And in order for you to sign on the dotted line that you give your consent for the procedure, you should be aware of these risk factors. After your eye has been numbed in the anaesthetic room and your time has come, you will be called through to the 
operated theatre. Again, several checks will be made to check your identity and confirm which eye you are having the operation on and also the surgeon will confirm which lens will be placed into your eye. In terms of hearing aids, um, because this is quite a common question, if the right eye, for example, is being operated on, we usually ask patients to remove the right hearing aid. That is because we do not want fluid to drip down the side of the face during the operation and damage the hearing aid. There's no reason why you cannot wear a hearing aid in the other ear if you already have one in place. When you come through to the operating theatre, you will be lying flat on the couch or the bed and you will be asked to look up towards a light on the ceiling or a particular target. The eye will then be cleaned around the eye and the eyelashes including the eyebrows and then that will be dried off and a sheet that's called a drape will be placed around the eye and face to make a sterile operating field. Your eye lids will be held apart so that you cannot blink with what's known as a speculum which also incidentally the anaesthetist will use in order to apply the subtenons block that I mentioned earlier. As I said earlier the operation can take anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes sometimes a lot quicker depending on the complexity of your case whether any difficulties are encountered and the experience of the surgeon operating on your eyes. Someone will be holding your hand throughout the operation so it's, it is important that if you need to cough, sneeze or talk or you require somebody to attend to you, you squeeze the hand twice and that informs the individual holding your hand to inform the surgeon to temporarily stop the procedure. This is important because you do not want to suddenly cough or sneeze whilst you have delicate instruments in your eyes around delicate structures. Two things that I failed to mention slightly earlier are the reason why the eye is meticulously cleaned is because we naturally have bugs that live on our skin and these bugs if they get into the eye can cause very serious infections. That's why the eyes the, or the eye being operated on will be meticulously cleaned. Also remember that once the drape is popped on top of your face to expose the eye that's being operated on, underneath that drape there will be a vent providing a fresh supply of oxygen. During the operation you may very well hear the surgeons talking and particularly if there are junior colleagues the consultant may very well be directing the surgeon in order to carry out steps in a certain fashion in order for you to achieve the best possible outcome and result. Some patients may also notice that the radio is on during the procedure and this is usually played to put patients at ease. However, if you have a strong aversion to hearing music, then you should discuss this with the surgeon because ultimately we want you to be as comfortable as possible. During the operation, you will likely hear buzzing noises. This is usually the ultrasound energy that is being used to break up the cataract and suck the cataract out of your eye. And then after this is done, the clear plastic lens will be placed into your eye. At the end of the operation, after the eye has been cleaned, a pad will be placed over the eye, followed by a shield. Immediately after the operation, you will be taken back to the ward where the nurse that was initially looking after you will recommence their care for yourself. Your blood pressure may very well initially be checked, after which you will typically be offered a warm drink and or some food. The aftercare process will then be explained to you by the nurse. The 
pad and shield will obviously still be on your eye because you will have just left the operating theatre. The pad can usually be removed the following morning, however the shield needs to be kept clean and you need to keep the shield with yourself and wear it at night in order to protect your eye from any inadvertent damage. The shield can be cleaned simply with some soap and hot water. The shield looks like this and basically you apply a layer of tape that comes across the shield and overhangs the shield and then you, for example, if you've had the right eye operated on, the um, if you think of this as a pear drop, the thinner end of the pear drop points up and the larger bottom end points down and you simply place this over your eye and place a sticky tape from here down to here and secure it in place. After the operation your eye may very well feel gritty, your vision may very well be slightly foggy, it may feel as though you've got an eyelash in your eye and there may be light sensitivity. These things particularly over the first 24 hours or so are normal. If you do have slight discomfort and or pain that you are struggling with then you can use some over-the-counter analgesia. The nurse will also explain the routine with respect to the eye drops that you will need to use typically for four weeks after the operation. These eye drops are again typically used four times a day for four weeks if a combination eye drop is used. However, protocols and regimes may vary from one hospital to another. Therefore, it's very important to accurately listen and take on board the information provided by the nurse who will be discharging you from hospital. If there are any doubts or concerns and you are concerned about whether you will be able to recall this information, then you can ask the nurse to write this information down for you, but bear in mind that this information will also be recorded and printed on the actual medication that will be dispensed from the hospital. Another point to mention here is if any issues were encountered during your operation, then you may be required to take either additional drops and or tablets. And this again will be explained to you if and when such treatment options are needed. The combination eye drop is usually a steroid to reduce inflammation and an antibiotic to reduce the chances of developing an infection. After all of this has been explained and you have your medication and you feel ready to do so, you will be allowed to leave hospital. Typically a family member will be advised to pick yourself up and or hospital transport can be arranged for you. The day after the operation, you will be required to remove both the pad and the eye shield. This will be explained to you by the nurse who will be discharging you and they will also provide you with an information leaflet should you fail to remember any of the information. Day one after the procedure, your drops can commence as advised to you by the nurse discharging you. Some patients find that wearing sunglasses after the operation serves two very useful benefits for them. The first benefit is that it reduces the light sensitivity that they may be experiencing and secondly it also provides a physical protective barrier for the eye that has just undergone surgery. Day one after the operation, providing that it has been an uncomplicated case, patients typically find that their vision is usually a lot clearer, especially if they had a significant cataract 
free operation. Your follow-up appointment will be made for you prior to you leaving hospital and typically this tends to happen four to six weeks after the operation. You may very well be required to see your optician at four to five weeks after the operation and then see your ophthalmologist six weeks after the operation. Again, this will vary considerably depending on where you are in the country or in the world. If your particular surgery was complicated and issues were encountered, you may be required to attend more frequently to see your ophthalmologist as they care for you during the recovery process. After the operation, you can carry on with regular activities such as using the computer. But remember, you need to protect your eye from physical trauma. This includes rubbing your eye and getting things such as shampoo into your eye. This needs to be carefully monitored and avoided for at least the first couple of weeks. Patients always ask, when can I drive? The answer to this is, if you can see a number plate clearly and you feel safe and legal to do so then you can drive. Contact sports, heavy lifting and swimming should be avoided and avoid squeezing your eye excessively as this will not allow the wounds made during the surgery to heal properly. Eye makeup is also advised not to be used for at least two weeks after the operation. After the operation, there are certain features that you should take very seriously. These include excruciating pain, any nausea and or vomiting, any flashing lights and or a sudden increase of floaters. And if your vision was initially improving and now it has started to deteriorate, and if your eye was initially red and this started to improve, and now it has started to deteriorate, then please do take these symptoms very seriously. Or if there is anything untoward and or concerning to you, then please do seek eye care professional advice. Depending on the nature of your symptom, this should be done promptly and accordingly. Thank you for watching this video all about cataract surgery. In this video, we have talked about the risks and benefits of cataract surgery, what happens before the operation, during the operation, and after the operation. If you have found this video useful, please do comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. A cataract surgery operation is a very common procedure, and if you have not had it yourself, you may very well know someone who has had it done. So please do share this video in order to educate as many people as possible. I would be very grateful to you if you could subscribe to my channel in order to help it to grow. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good Christmas and New Year. It's been a very challenging time for everybody and 2020 has brought many challenges to many different individuals but hopefully you have overcome them and you will have a prosperous 2021. Thank you again for watching. <laughs>